How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I'm going to do some testing of three different wire sizes in 12 gauge, 10 gauge, which I'm testing right now, and 8 gauge. And why I'm doing this testing is because this is a critical factor when you're building out your DIY solar setup, understanding what gauge wire you should be using to minimize what's called line losses. Now there's multiple factors that you need to take into account and there are calculators online. I'll show you one of those but I wanted to cross-reference what I'm seeing in the calculator with what I'm actually experiencing in a test using these three different wire gauges. So let's jump into it and I'll show you the setup on how we're gonna test this and then we'll jump right into the results. So we got a mostly sunny day, but we do have clouds rolling in and out. So we will have shade like we're having right now. We have two Helion 360 watt panels wired in parallel. Now they are connected up to an EcoFlow Delta Pro that's hiding up under the tree to keep it in the shade. And that EcoFlow Delta Pro is the solar generator. It's gonna be accumulating everything that we produce during these tests. Since that's an MPP charge controller, these panels are gonna be running around 40.5 volts and 8.9 amps per panel. But again, we're in parallel, so then that means we're gonna be about 40.5 volts. And then in full sunlight, we'll be in the 16 to 17 amp range because since they're in parallel, we're going to be adding up the current and keeping that voltage the same. The way we're gonna be actually testing this is a small power meter here where we can measure the amperage, the voltage, and then various other parameters that cycle through. Specifically, what I want to monitor is the watt hours produced at the start point, which is right here. Then we go through our lines, right? And now I'm on to my last test, which is the eight gauge, 100 foot of wire. We go through that wire, and then we have the same monitor here where we're gonna be able to compare those watt hours during the test. And then that's gonna give us our overall efficiency and the associated line losses that I'll be able to compare to the online calculators, knowing that we're going to be losing some voltage. The question is how much voltage drop do you have across each of these gauge of wires? Let's go ahead and compare our calculated losses from the online calculator to what we're actually seeing through the first two trials and then that last one will finish up and we'll have the completed results. So I'm going to use this calculator on unboundsolar.com and it serves our purposes here for what we're looking. The primary loss is voltage drop. We're going to drop the voltage at the start point across our wires to that point where it enters the eco flow and that's where we get our overall losses of the line. So what we need to do is enter in the voltage. Remember that was 40.5 volts for the MPP voltage. We're going to get the length of line and this is just one length. How far are the panels away from your equipment? So for me, that's 100 feet. We're entering the load. Now I have two panels in parallel. So that means I need to add both of those currents that we saw at 8.9 amps. So that's gonna give us 17.8 amps running through those lines. This is also where you can start to work with should you be wiring in series or should you be wiring in parallel or a combination of series parallel to adjust your voltage and amperage, which can have an impact on your overall line losses depending on the length that you're going. We'll go ahead and calculate that. Now it shows a 70% drop. Well, that's because we have 18 gauge, which is completely impractical. Our first trial started on 12 gauge and 10 and 12 gauge are gonna be the most popular wire sizes that you'll see. And you'll see a link down in the description of the three different wires that I was using for this test. Okay, so for 12 gauge, our first trial running at our 40.5 volts at 17.8, eight amps for the 100 feet, we can expect to have a 17.4% drop. That is a massive drop. That would be unacceptable for setting up your system and you would need to go higher in your overall gauge of wire. Now let's go ahead and do 10 to see how much that drops it down. If we stepped up to 10, we're gonna go down to about 11, so 10.9%. And then if we go to eight, it's 6.9%. 
What I would like to see is getting down to the 5% or under, and depending on what kind of system, if it's a DIY system, that's what I would personally be targeting. Now, if this is a professionally installed system, they might even have to be 3% or below. So that just gives you a few points to go off of. But now let's compare the calculated to what we are actually seeing in our results from the first two trials, and then we'll go see what that eight gauge brought in for the final trial. All right, so bringing in our spreadsheet, we have three trials, 12, 10, and eight gauge. AWG, American Wiring Gauge, is what we're using. 10 and 12 are gonna be really common. Uh, you're gonna see those in a lot of DIY applications. Eight, you're gonna have to look a little closer, but you might need for your application. Now, the way I can pair this is I took a picture of the actual power monitor or power analyzers at the ending point of each of the trials. So I took one at the panel, remember that's before going through the 100 feet of 12, 10, or eight gauge, and then at the EcoFlow after that length of wire. So I took the 747 watt hours that were accumulated during that test, compared that to the 657 watt hours, and that is where I got my loss. So for 12 gauge, I saw a loss, a considerable loss of 12% of the overall energy production, and that was driven by a voltage drop across that wire. Comparing that to 17.4, which is what we calculated, that was a little, I'd say the calculation was a little more conservative, and that is because we are putting that maximum MPP point, so that's a voltage and amperage when it's perfectly standard test conditions, the sun is right overhead, everything's perfect, but I had a mostly sunny day, so I did have clouds moving in and out, so that current was dropping down, which would limit the line losses because we weren't pushing as much current through. So the 12 is, I'd say in real world application, pretty, practical comparing it to the calculated. Now for 10, I have the same down here. We accumulated 512 watt hours compared to 470 or 480, put those both in, and then we had a loss of 6.3%. I will note a little more cloudy during this trial and it ran a little bit longer, and that is compared to 10.9. So Again, we were considerably under, and on a percentage base, we were even a little bit more under in terms of not losing as much in the 10 gauge as we expected with the calculation. Now, the way this is shaping up, I probably would spring for that 8 gauge if I was running the two helium panels in parallel, running that 100 feet into my equipment, whether it's an EcoFlow Delta Pro, everything in one, or if I have a charge controller, my battery, and my inverter, I would probably go for the eight gauge to keep that percentage down in terms of the overall loss, but let's go see what that actually was in our test because that is the last one that I need to finish up. Our expected is 6.9. If we compare that to what we are seeing, we're probably gonna be somewhere around four to 4.5%, but let's check it out. So the results are in, we just finished up the eight gauge test. Now remember, this is pretty much for your DIY projects. When it comes to tying into the grid and getting solar on your home to offset your power bill, that's usually beyond the comfort level of most homeowners that are even kind of that intermediate to advanced DIYer. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm interested in doing all these different projects, but I am hiring out 11 kilowatt system to be placed on my home in the coming weeks. Now, where I started off is just getting a baseline of how much that was gonna cost me so I could kind of start saving and planning for that investment in my home. Now there's a link in the description to the exact solar calculator that I use to size that system and then also get that rough estimate on cost. You just type in a little bit information on your home so they can gauge that size of the system and give you as accurate of an estimate as possible. Just remember, you can get connected to installers or, or multiple installers so you can compare and contrast those systems, compare and contrast the quotes so you can make the best decision specifically for your home. Now for the eight gauge results, I was guessing four to four and a half percent. It actually came in at 3.3%, so even under my expectations. Now you had just seen the sun kind of coming in and out. So again, during this trial, we were not cranking the whole time. We did have a little bit of cloud cover coming in and out. But specifically, if I was running that 100 feet to a similar setup like this, I would be using that eight gauge. Now, one thing should be noted, 
in this exact setup, if I had that EcoFlow and I wanted to maximize it, it runs voltage from 11 to 150 volts and then up to 15 amps. So I'm kind of capping out the amperage, but I'm not even close to capping out the voltage. So I would be arranging panels in series to get my voltage a little bit higher. And then maybe I could actually make that efficiency a little bit better by dropping down that current and limiting the amount of voltage drop I have across the length of wire. So just know you can look at series, parallel or series parallel in terms of the wiring configuration on the system that you're setting up at your home. If you want to know more about those different types of wiring, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through three different examples to give you kind of that baseline as you design your systems for your projects around the house. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.